So we're going to talk about, and this is going to be lesson one, we're going to talk about how to beat pharmacology, all right? Because pharmacology is one of the one of the number one weak areas for a lot of people. So we're going to talk about studying the suffixes, types of medication questions, dosage calculations, as well as narrowing the answers. And this is another a separate strategy, though. And so um, we're going to talk about this to help you know how to study for this area. So, and this is going to really help you for those of you who you who weak area was pharmacology. So let's first start with studying the suffixes. So one thing I talk about is when it comes to studying for pharmacology, you know, to study about the suffixes and the rationale and the and two side effects. So I'm going to go over with you those ones in detail. That's what we're going to go over with right now. So there are 25, 25 main suffixes of classifications of drugs that's normally tested on the exam. And every suffix is associated with a rationale and side effect. So hopefully you remember the significance and the importance of study in this matter. So let's first talk about the first one. So these are so there's several, but this is gonna really help you group your studying, you know, group your studying and and you can definitely take notes as I'm talking. Don't feel like you have to write down each of them, but I mean you can or you cannot because it's already given to you. But this is just gonna help you to begin to be aware of these things. So the first one I want to go over is thrombolytics, all right? Thrombolytics. So this ends with ACE, A-S-E. And it's important that you understand the difference between thrombolytics and anticoagulants. It's not the same thing, all right? We don't give, we don't give thrombolytics in the same situation as we do with anticoagulants. So with the thrombolytics, the ending is A-S-E, and what this does, it, it dissolves clots. So clots that are already formed, okay, that are already formed, and we give it to dissolve it. So an example of this where this occurs is somebody who has had a stroke, all right? So, and there's like a window time to when we give this, actually because there's also some severe side effects that can occur. One of them is severe bleeding, all right? Severe bleeding, and it's supposed to say abdominal cramps. Severe severe bleeding, either abdominal cramps or abdominal pain. Severe bleeding, that's what it, that's what the, that's, those are what the side effects are. Because remember, anything that what it's doing is to, like whatever it is doing, the side effects is what is going to be, what will be worse if it does, if it overdoes that 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 rationale, so the purpose of of this is to dissolve a clot that's already formed. So if it's so, if we're not careful, the patient can go into it can dissolve it so much that they go into severe bleeding. So a good example of this would be streptase. Streptase. And remember, it's when they when they just had a stroke, so not where it's been, you know, 10, 5 years, they had a stroke, they have history of CVA or something. That's not the same situation. They just had a stroke, and now we're going to give them strep taste. Okay? So with thrombolytics, it dissolves clots. It doesn't prevent clots. That's the biggest thing. It's not the same thing as anticoagulants because it dissolves clots. All right, and then there will be another point where I'm going to go over anticoagulants so that way you can see that it's not the same thing. Now antifungals, all right, antifungals, the suffix for this is azole, A-Z-O-L-E. And with antifungals, what they do, they treat fungal infection. I'm going to tell you right now, it's with, with antifungals, it's usually, oftentimes we, when we give it, it's like a topical treatment. It, it's, it's like a powder, it's like a cream, 
And a lot of the fungal infections are related to skin. So that's the reason why the side effect is rash and burning. Okay, so like for example, and a good example of this would be meconazole. One thing I'll say is that some of the anti, sometimes some of the fungal infections we'll see is it's in between skin folds, okay? Like in between skin folds, so we'll put in this, we'll put this medication to help to relieve the infection. So it, this will be common with somebody who's overweight, and we'll put it in there, and then, it, but the side effect though is that it can cause rash and burning, rash and burning, all right? And the example of this is meconazole.